Wow. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Can we lift our hands to Jesus? Amen. Thank you, Father, for your favor. Thank you, Father, for your blessing. My God, I feel the anointing falling right now, just right now, just right now. Lift your hands up right now. New fire is coming here. This city is going to be blessed beyond what we've ever seen before. In fact, I'll tell you right from the beginning, the Lord spoke to me recently, another major prophecy for Kenya. And he said, Nairobi will become the New York City of Africa. Somebody shout if you, if you believe it. All right. <laughs> Archbishop, good to see you. All of you preachers here. Lift your hands up. I want fire to come on your ministry. Oh, yes. And fa the Father has seen all the trouble in the nation for so many years, and he's tired of it. He's tired of seeing people suffering in poverty and lack and degradation and corruption and all kinds of disease and hating each other and all these demons operating. God says the church is responsible to bring my power to this generation, and these things need not to be happening in your communities. I remember one story, Dr. Paul Aneche from uh, Abuja, Nigeria, who has built the largest church building on planet Earth. It seats 100,000 people. I want to ask a question. Can this be built in Kenya? Yes. Can mega churches like that come in Kenya, not just in America or Nigeria or in uh, Korea or places like that? Can it happen in Kenya? Yes. But God has to find a man yes. who has a pure heart. Yes. God has to find someone yes. like uh, John 151. Who's the one? He's, Jesus said, Nathaniel, in you who there's no guile. There's nothing wrong in you. You're a righteous son and God says I can raise you up now and this one saw the vision of the angels of God ascending and descending upon the earth Jacob saw the ladder from heaven to earth and Jesus said what he said let it be done on earth as it is in heaven and they give us this day our daily bread you know this number two statement from Jesus was about provision lift your hand and say Lord I claim every provision that I need and want in my life you need people, you need friends, you need help, you need love, you need favor, you need equipment, you need property, you need land, you need real estate, you need money, you need good health, hallelujah. You need all these things to live. Yes. And Jesus didn't put it last. Revelation 5.12, the Lord said, I receive back, I took it back from the devil. When Adam gave it over, I took it back. And I said, now, I take this back as the Son of God, as the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, Revelation chapter 5. And he said, power and riches, number two again, you see, and then wisdom to know what to do with the power and the riches, and then strength, which is physical health, and then glory, honor, and blessing, for what? For the purpose of us taking dominion over the earth. The first chapter in the first book of the Bible, Genesis 126, the Lord said, Elohim said himself, I made you a little, uh, I, well that was in Psalm 8, I made you a little lower than Elohim. The King James said angels, but really the word is Elohim, which means God himself. Maybe the British were scared to put that we're lower than God, they wanted to say we're lower than the angels, but that's not true. Man is number two, hello? Again, number two, the number two thing. God is number one. We're number two. The angels serve us and the demons are under our feet. Amen. One, two, three, four. That's the spiritual ranking of beings in the universe. Power, riches, wisdom, strength. He said in Genesis 126, I want you to have dominion over everything. Lift your hand and say, that's what I'm going to have in the next day. Nothing will have dominion over me again. Yes. I'm winning this thing. And as uh, Bishop Malova has so uh, amazingly said so many times, you, you know, you could testify till tomorrow and we'd still be here listening. I have all the testimonies and stories you have. I have a lot of stories myself. <laughs> How many have some stories? 
preacher man, you, you, you talked about that. I was, first I was saying, what is he doing? He's talking about all these problems. Whoa, whoa, slow down. <laughs> but it's true, you know, but it's true. Yeah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel a sweet wind blowing from heaven right now. Kabbal Shah, Vala Shah, the fire is here right now, right now, right now. Yes, Lord. Varabu Shekalahaya, Mabra Shakad, the Lesoko, the Lenso, the Shiko, the Leso, Vabro Shakala Sati, the Shikidi. Bless this nation of 58 million people now. Bless from the north to south, the east and the west, the 47 counties. Touch with fire the 47 governors. Make them work for the people. Touch the government, Lord, and make them know their job is to serve the people, not themselves. We thank you, Lord, for the economy coming back. I prophesy tourism is coming back. I prophesy more development is coming back. International relations with uh, many countries across the world is coming back. Kenya is rising higher. And this city is going to be a major metropolis. The Lord said this all the way back in 2002 through, through this voice here. That's 22 years ago when there was nothing like that in Nairobi. Now look. The expressways. I was just with Archbishop Harrison Nanga. We had a private meeting and he was saying, uh, I gave him the copies of the prophecies. Archbishop, I could get you a copy of those. I want to make sure you have. From 2002 in print all the way till now. And all of this happened. The Lord spoke about superhighway. He spoke about the train lines across the country. Now we see the SGR. He talked about it, the expressway, the, the road developments. And I'm telling you, there's more coming. This city will be the jewel of Africa. This city, this place right here, that's a great destiny. Now the people have to catch up to the vision. The Lord says, now my people, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with my anointing? What are you gonna do with my fire? What are you gonna do with my will? What are you gonna do with my cause? Like David said in Psalm 35, my cause, who they the favor of my righteous cause, uh, let the Lord be magnified, let the kingdom be expanded. You have a responsibility as servants of God to cause the things to go into place now. The Lord says, now, get ready, for I'm breathing a new wind over this place. <sighs> it's coming from heaven, from heaven. And I'm laying the weight of my glory upon your shoulders, my church. And you're going to see the greatest days ahead that you've ever seen. God says breakthrough and the devil, we deal with the devil. The devil will have no place in this mission. He will have no part in this thing. He will have no way to do anything in this thing. The Lord says now, I'm gonna bless my people in ways you've not seen before in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, I am Thomas Manton IV, more later. Love you much.